So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how spike protein contributes to clots. We're going to continue with this theme, but what's really interesting, we're going to look at scientific paper where the authors of that publications, they looked at the clots from COVID-19 patients who experienced either heart attack or stroke, and they looked at the clots directly. So they isolated the clots and they looked at the composition of that. And then we're going to talk about all of the different molecules that could potentially be contributing as well to these clotting uh, issues. And the reason why we need to look at this information is because we need to start figuring out what do we actually look at when we need to investigate these clots and therefore, what can we do in order to start minimizing the damage and prevent it? All right, my name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Merit Genomics. Let's get going with this. And as promised, first, let's take a look at this, this paper that I talked about where they isolate those clothes. Really, really interesting. So they had only a few patients from, with COVID-19 and they compared that against positive control, which was a Mm, tissue from lungs that was being isolated and they also had negative control which was a clot from a stroke patient that was not COVID-19 infected at all and what the authors were able to show that the clots from COVID-19 patients those that actually experienced the stroke or the heart attack these clots stained positive for spike protein and they had these amazing images showing cells as well as they did the immunostaining. We talked about immunostaining many times before. That's basically where you use antibodies that fluoresce. The antibodies will attach to the protein that you're interested in. In this case, they looked at proteins that, that were identifying where the spike protein is, and they also looked at proteins that are on the surface of platelets. And they were able to show that these clots, both the platelets and the spike proteins are definitely present overlapping they were, they were showing them in green and red color. And the, own, the additional stain color you might see them is uh, DAPI. We talked about that in the past as well. That stains where the nuclei of cells are and basically shows you where the genetic material inside the nucleus is. So really amazing images. It shows you direct evidence that spike protein is found in the clots of COVID-19 patients who suffered from stroke or heart attack really really powerful information negative controls did not show any of this also remember i was mentioning um, in previous videos that the authors that i've been discussing believe that the unusual clots in lungs would also be present and this is exactly what these authors are confirming that in the positive controls from lung samples there also was a spike protein presence but in none of these samples nucleocapsid from virus was present. So this is strictly spike protein contributing in the development of these clots. So one more key piece of evidence showing how spike protein potentially could be contributing to the formation of these clots. Now for the summary of this video, let's talk about the, all the different molecules that are also being found in these clots. The reason why this is important because the authors that have been investigating the, these suggest that we potentially might have to look for the changing levels of these molecules in the blood in order to start assessing what might be happening to these individuals. We talked about these molecules in the previous videos as well, but let's recount this really quick. So the first one was von Willebrand factor. So that's a molecule that is involved in propagation of clots as well, because that molecule helps to coalesce or bring platelet molecules together. Now, remember platelet molecules are key and important in formations of clots as well. The other one was platelet factor four. Platelet factor four can also help with the, with the formation of clots. It's released by the platelets itself. It's also in its own right immunogenic. It means it can actually promote creation of clot, or oh, sorry, promote creation of antibodies. <laughs> antibodies uh, that themselves will be recognizing this complex. Now, platelet factor four can also interact with heparin, which also helps to promote clot formation. And platelet factor four can also interact with that von Willebrand factor I just mentioned, also promoting clot formation. Another molecule is Mm, alpha, mm, I believe alpha antiplasmin 2, and that, that one is a molecule that can be contributed.
these clots now this molecule prevents breakdown of clots so that's another really important one that they're discovering one that i won't be mentioning um, right now is i think it was called serum amyloid a we'll skip that one for now and then i'll mention two more so total of six so first one was ooh, i think they were called e-selectins so these molecules can be increased on the surface of endothelial cells post-injury now these molecules are important because they can also interact with other molecules on platelets and again once again help to contribute in a clot formations what are the other molecules that have also been found to be increasing in these in in their levels inside these clots now let's see if i remember the name it's pcam1 p-e-c-a-m-1 so that was platelet endothelial cell mm, activation molecule adhesion molecule one there you go Whew, i did manage to remember now these molecules can also help platelets interact with the site of injury and they also are known to be important for the formation of clots of course on top of that as i already mentioned spike so all of these molecules should be measured so you should look at the type of clots that might be found in post infection in individuals who are experiencing long COVID symptoms and then the author suggests we should be looking at the levels of these particular molecules so once we start measuring these we know potentially what kind of threat we are dealing with all right that's all i have for you today so if you like this content please uh, support the channel so give us a like share the video that's a big one subscribe if you haven't already join my patreon account as well patreon account is where i post additional information that would not make it onto this channel and then lastly consider checking out a covid 19 q a events and the one we have coming up will be dealing with igg4 antibodies specifically these unusual antibodies that are being observed now in some individuals only post mRNA vaccinations. So what does that mean? We're still figuring this out. And uh, as always, thank you for all your support. Thank you for all the donations and much appreciated. It helps us grow. And I look forward to seeing you in the next installment. Bye everyone. <laughs>